I did to do that. <laughs> Good morning, students. My name is Albert Einstein. That would be Professor Einstein to you. In the next few minutes, I will give you a quick overview of my favorite subject, me. <laughs> okay, now I can start by giving you a long, detailed account of where I was born and brought up and what my childhood was like, but that's not why you invited me here, was it? You probably want to know what I did and why I became one of the most recognized names in modern history. So let me get straight to the point. But first, I was born in Ulm in the Kingdom of Württemberg in the German Empire in 1879. In 1880, I moved to Munich, where my father founded a company that manufactured electrical equipment based on a direct current. I attended a Catholic school, elementary school from the age of 5 to 10. Blah, blah, blah. Is this interesting? No, I don't think so. So let me get straight to the point. But first, you should know that I was a top student in school. At age 17, I graduated from high school and enrolled in 1896 at the Polytechnic in Zurich. In the same year, my future wife, Mileva Mare, also enrolled at the Polytechnic, and she was the only girl in my class. Did you get that? I got the only girl in my class. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was good. <laughs> in 1901, I had a paper published on the capillary forces of the simple everyday straw used for drinking. <laughs> Imagine that, a paper on how a straw works, published in the prestigious Annals of Physics. Man, I must have been good. I told you this would be fun. Soon after this, I probably did some of what I thought was my best work and discovered and published a theory on the photoelectric effect in 1905. It was more than 15 years later that this work was discovered to be useful and for which I won the Nobel Prize in Physics. Based on this and other deeper science work, I became a leading scientist in 1908. In 1911, I calculated that, based on my new theory of general relativity, light from another star would be bent by the sun's gravity. That prediction was confirmed by observations made by a British expedition led by Sir Arthur Eddington during the solar eclipse of 1919. International media reports of this theory and the confirmation of it made me world famous in the 1920s. This is a theory explaining the theory of relativity. It says, the theory of relativity explains that everything except light travels at different speeds depending on how you view it. For example, if you're standing on the ground and you see an airplane flying above you, it looks like it's barely moving across the sky. However, if you're standing on the runway and that same airplane flies right next to you, it's gone in a few seconds. And if you're sitting on the airplane and looking down at the ground below, it doesn't seem like the plane is moving. And that is the theory of relativity. These are three examples of an airplane traveling at the same rate of speed, but depending on how you're viewing it, it looks like it's traveling at different rates of speed. The speed of a moving object depends on how it's being viewed. However, the speed of light is always constant. In 1921, I was, I was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics and won this certificate with this medal. Um, it says, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences during its combined meeting on November 9, 1922, as proposed in the writings of Alfred Nobel, has decided to award Albert Einstein the prize within the field of theoretical physics on the important discovery or invention of the photoelectric effect, and, did, and thus his subsequent discoveries in physics on the Brownian motion and the theory of relativity, from Stockholm, December 10, 1922. Because relativity was still controversial, somewhat controversial, the Nobel Prize was often officially bestowed for my explanation of the photoelectric effect. This is a news article published about the photoelectric effect. I'll read one On December 10, 1922, Albert Einstein, that's me, received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the photoelectric effect and his many contributions to theoretical physics. A photoelectric effect occurs when electrons are released from matter as an outcome of the absorption of energy from electromagnet radiation of very short wavelength, such as visible or ultraviolet light. Electrons released in this manner may be referred to as photoelectrons. Got that? That's sixth grade stuff. <laughs> Elementary. 
I was not able to make it to the award ceremony, so a friend sent me a letter telling me what was said. Let me read a bit of it to you. It's about me. Albert Einstein has had a tremendous impact on the world of theory. The world theoretical physics. He's demonstrated to the world that absolute time has to be replaced by a new absolute, the speed of light. Einstein went against the grain, that's me, and dismissed the old physics. Einstein, that's me, has explained numerous phenomena over the past two decades. But today, December 10th, 1922, we would like to honor Albert Einstein, that's me, with the Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery of the photoelectric effect in 1905. He showed us that when photons of light energy strike atoms of metal, the photons force the atoms to release electrons. This helped us justify the quantum theory. Unfortunately, Albert Einstein is only... That's... That's... Me. me you. you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's unable to make it tonight due to him being too remote from Sweden. After I won the Nobel Prize, I became even more widely known. People were interviewing me everywhere I went. For example, a student once interviewed me and asked me some very well thought out questions. I thought you might enjoy seeing some of my answers. Please note, uh, um, here goes. To begin, Professor Einstein, please give us a brief explanation on the theory of relativity. It's actually quite simple. Think of it this way. Put your hand on a hot stove for a second, and it seems like a minute. Talk to a pretty girl for a minute, and it seems like a second. That's relativity. <laughs> <laughs> of infinity. Only two things are infinite. The universe and human stupidity. And I'm still not so sure about the universe. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I heard that added, uh, <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I can read about myself over and over again and never get tired of it. Ever. Now let me leave you with a few words which later became quotes that were attributed to me. Facts don't fit the theory? Change the facts. <laughs> Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. <laughs> Honestly, who doesn't? Imagination is more important than knowledge. This one, my favorite. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. <laughs> of course, I, I'm so great. <laughs> I hope you have found the subject of today's lecture, me, inspiring and educational. I had a great time and hope you did too. Good day.